Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Uh, let's solve this problem. In this problem we are given uh, this series circuit and we are required to uh, determine uh, all these right. So, in the first part we are required to find the total resistance for the series circuit. So, since it is a series circuit, so we know that uh, the total resistance for a series circuit always equal to the summation of all the resistances right. So, we can say that for part A the total resistance will be equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and since R1, R2 and R3 are given so we can add them right. So, R1 is 2 ohms so we will write 2, R2 is 1 ohm and similarly R3 is 5 ohm right. So, this is uh, our, our total equals to 8 ohms right. So, the total resistance of this series circuit is equal to 8 ohms right. So, we can draw a simple diagram right. We can draw that diagram like this. This will be our equivalent resistance and this will be our source right. So, this is that our total which is equal to 8 ohms and this is that uh, source battery right this is 20 volts this is right. Now, in part B we are required to determine the source current right. So, the source current this will be the source current let us say that we represent the source current by I s right. So, from this circuit we can say that by applying the Ohm's law we can say that E is equal to I s into the R total right from this circuit. So, we can get that I s which is the source current will be equal to E divided by R total. So, E is 20 volts and R total is 8 right. So, this will give us the, the source current. So, from this when we solve this so the source current is 2.5 amps right. So, we can write that I s is equal to 2.5 amperes right. Similarly, in the third part we are required to determine the voltage V1, V2, V3 right. So, in order to determine the voltages uh, as we know that in series circuit the uh, voltage will not remain the same right. They, they the voltage will be divided among these three resistances right. So, and as we know that uh, in the series circuit the current remains constant right and that current will be equal to the source current right. So, we can say that this current which is flowing in the circuit is equal to I s which is equal to 2.5 amps right as we have determined that this is equal to 2.5 amperes right. So, now uh, since we are required to find V 1, V 2 and V 3. So, again from Ohm's law we can write that V 1 will be equal to I s into R 1 similarly V 2 the voltage drop at resistance 2 will be equal to I s R 2 and similarly V 3 the voltage drop in circuit 3 will be equal to I s R 3 right. So, we are we have determined this I s right. So, this will be V 1 and I s is 2.5 and R 1 is 2 ohms right. This is 2 ohm. So, this will be 5 volts right 2.5 into 2 is 5 volts. Similarly, V 2 will be equal to this is again I s is 2.5 and R 2 is 1 ohm right. So, we will multiply this. So, then V 2 is 2.5 volts. Similarly, V 3 is equal to again I s which is 2.5 into R 3 which is 5. So, 2.5 into 5 this is equal to 12.5 volts right. So, this is 12.5 volts right. So, we can check that whether the source voltage is equal to the summation of voltage drops between among these three resistances right. So, we can say that this will be V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3. So, this will check our calculation right. So, this is the check. So, this is equal to this V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3 must give us 20 volt right. Since the source is providing us with the 20 volts uh, voltage right voltage supply. 
So this 20 is equal to V1 which is 5 plus 2.5 plus 12.5. So 12.5 plus 2.5 is 15 and 15 plus 5 is 20, right? So 20 is equal to 20. So this means that our calculation is accurate and the voltage has been divided among these three resistances, right? And the division of the voltage depends upon the resistance uh, value, right? So, since IS was constant, right, which is 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, so the voltage drop depends on the resistance value. So, if the resistance is more, then the voltage drop will be more. And if the resultant uh, resistance is less, then the voltage drop will be less, right? Similarly, uh, in part D, we are required to calculate the power dissipated by each resistance, right? So, as we know that power P1 will be equal to, as we know that the power is equal to IV, we have this general formula, right? If I write that power is equal to IV, we know this, or uh, if we put V is equal to IR using Ohm's law, then power is equal to I square R. This is another power formula, right? We have one this formula. Similarly, if if we if we put current from the Ohm's law, right? So we can write that from Ohm's law, we can write that V is equal to I R, and then I is equal to V divided by R. So now, if I replace I by V divided by R using this equation, right? So this will be V divided by R into V. I have substituted I equals to V divided by R in this equation. So we can say that this is equal to V square divided by R. So we have these three equations, right? I can write that the power equation is equal to I V. If we know the current and voltage uh, for a given resistance, so we will we can apply this formula to determine the power dissipated for that particular resistance. We can use this equation. This is I square R. If we know the current and the corresponding resistance, so we can find we can use this formula to find the power dissipated. And the, we have this third equation which is equal to V square divided by R. So, if we know the voltage drop for a given resistance, so we can find the power dissipated using this formula. So, now for resistance 1, I am going to use this formula P is equal to I V and I is same which is I S, right. And V1, since we want to find the power for R1, so then the voltage drop across R1 is V1, right? So we will use this equation. So then P1 will be equal to IS. So IS is 2.5 and V1 is 5 volts, right? We have determined this. So this will be P1. So 2.5 into 5 gives us 12.5. So P1 equals to 12.5 watts. Right. Similarly, P2. So for for resistance to I, I'm going to use this uh, equation. Right. This is equal to I square R. We can use this equation as well. Right. Since we know the current and voltage drop for R2 as well. But I'm going to use this equation as well. Right. So this is P2. So this will be IS since IS remains the same. Right. Since it's a series circuit. So, IS is 2.5 squared and this will be since we want to determine the uh, power dissipated in R2. So, this will be R2 and R2 is 1. So, 2.5 squared, 2.5 squared gives us 6.25, right? So, P2 equals to 6.25, right? And if I use this same formula for R2, so then we can write that P2 is also equal to IS. I s times V 2. So, this will give us uh, this will give us the same answer, right? So, this I s is 2.5 and the voltage drop across R 2 is 2.5. So, 2.5 and 2.5 is again 2.5 square. So, this will give us that 6.25 watts, right? This is also in watts. So, this is P 2. Similarly, uh, P 3. So, for P3, I will use this formula, right? So, this is V square divided by R. So, this will be V3 
divided by R3 since we want to determine the power dissipated in resistance 3, right. So, P3 and V3 is 12.5, this is 12.5 square divided by R3. So, R3 is 5, this is 2.5 square divided by 5. So, this gives us this is 12.5 remember right this is 12.5 so this gives us 31.25 watts right so p3 31.25 watts right so again as we can see that uh, the power dissipated is also depends on the resistance value right so as we can see that r1 is 2 ohm right so the power dissipated is 12.5 p2 is uh, 6.25 since r2 is less than r1 so the power dissipated is also less than uh, p1 and similarly here i will write that um, r3 is greater than r1 and r1 is greater than r2 right and again we can see that v3 is greater than V1 is greater than V2 and similarly P3 is greater than P1 is greater than P2 right. So, we have this relationship. So, for series circuit this is very important right and in, in part E we are required to determine the power delivered by the source and compare it to the sum of the power levels of part D, right. So, the power delivered by the source, so part E, so the power delivered by the source will be equal to I times E, right or we can say that the source current times E, right. We have that same formula. So, power delivered by source, right. So, this will be equal to so, Is is again 2.5 and E is 20, so 20 into 2.5, 20 multiply by 2.5, so this gives us 50 watts. So, and further it is said that compare it to the sum of the power levels, right, of R1, R2 and R3. So, P1 plus P2 plus P3. So, P1 is 12.5, P2 is 6.25 and P3 is 31.25. So, if we add up all of these, they will be equal to the power delivered by the source, right. They must be equal to the power delivered by the source, right. So, this is 12.5 plus 6.25 plus 31.25. So, this is equal to 50. So, the power delivered must be equal to the power dissipated by each resistance in the series circuit. So, this is the solution of uh, this very simple problem uh, related to the introductory circuit analysis. I hope you people would have understood this particular problem. Kindly subscribe my channel if you people want me to solve such more problems.